Good morning. Um, our team number is 9003H. I'm Galileo Shish Wong Cheng. We are from Poland Cove Centenary Liu Shu Chong Memorial College. Uh, the title of our project is called The Expressibility of Cosines at Sum of Basis. Why do we come up with such a problem? This is because of a problem of a mathematical Olympic that is CHAMO. Proof that. Test the thought exists, PQR being rational number such that cosine 2 pi over 7 equals to P per square root of Q per cube root of R. The official solution to this problem um, used the Gauss rational root theorem and some basic theory of polynomials were inspired by this problem. Therefore, we want to generalize this as followed. That is, for which opine p cosine 2 pi over p equals to a0 plus a1 up to an, where ai equals to di to the 1 over pi. di are rational number. Pi is the i pi, and Pco equals to 1. We want to solve this problem by a similar method as that of the ori original problem. However, we failed. Therefore, it's a must to seek alternative or even as one rate. We are inspired by a wise that um, cosine 2 pi over p actually equals to theta p per theta p inverse over 2, where theta p equals to the primitive p of GRT, that is e to the 2 pi i over p. Therefore, we associate this problem uh, with the psychotomic field, that is q adjoint theta p, which co contains q adjoint theta p per theta p inverse which contains rational number. And we know that the degree here is P minus 1. The degree here is 2. So by tower property, we know that the degree here is P minus 1 over 2. Now, we can translate our problem algebraically as follows. That is, excuse me, for which prime? Or prime? P, we let a few k, that is q adjoin all the ai, where ai is not a rational number, that, is, uh, that means that di is not a perfect p power. For, for which time k would contain this field? And we notice that the degree here is n which is product of distinct pi number. So, n is square three. And the degree here, we have just shown that the degree here is p minus one over two. There are two key steps to achieve our theorem. The first one is to notice that um, q adjoins theta b over q is a second extension so all, uh, so all its sub-extensions are circuit as well. Therefore, there is a property of circuit extension. That is, if Q divides P over 1, over P minus 1 over 2, that is Q adjoint theta P plus theta P inverse over the, power, the degree of here. Then there exists a field such that F is contained in Q adjoint theta p per theta p inverse, and the degree here is Q. The second T step is to prove that this field F actually equals to Q adjoint AI, where PI equals to Q, that prime number. Yeah. How do we achieve this? We prove two things. The first one, we prove that the norm 
of AI is belongs to the Q adjoint AI. Second, AI belongs to Q adjoint norm of AI. Proof for one. Since norm of DI, do we, uh, DI is the rational number, therefore it's from the ground field. So we take the norm, that means that we take the power of the degree here. On the other hand, we know that um, DI actually equals to AI to the power of Q. That is, using the multiplicative property of norm, we have that equals to norm of AI to the power of Q. So we refer back to the uh, field diagram here. We, we, um, sorry, I didn't draw it actually. <laughs> but anyway, the degree here actually equals to n over Q, that is by the tower property. So we have norm AI equals to DI to one over Q to the n over q, and di to 1 over q is ai, and n over q is an integer. So we are done for the, f for the first part. And the second part is easier. That's because we notice that n is square v, so q and n over q are co-prime. Therefore, there exists integer x, y, such that ai, ai to the 1, equals to ai to the qx plus n over qy. That is ai to the qx times ai n over qy. ai to the q is di, which is a rational number. And ai n over q, we have just shown that this is the norm of ai. So we know that AI actually equals to a rational number times the, times the norm to our integral power. So we are done for the second part. So by one and two, we can conclude that Q AI, Q adjoint AI equals to Q adjoint the norm. And we use the fact that norm belongs to the ground field. So Q adjoint AI equals to Q adjoint the norm would be contained in, in that field. Oh, sorry. Moreover, we know that F over Q, the degree here is a prime number, Q. Therefore, in order to have a sub-extension here, it will be either equal to f or q. So if it's not q, then it must be f. So we are done for the lemma. So what we mean is to notice that. So what we have so far is that q adjust theta p contains q adjust theta p plus theta p inverse, contains f equal to q adjoint a i, contains the rational number. We know that Q adjoint theta P over Q is a Gower extension and is abelian. So all its sub extension is also Gower. So including D is Gower. Is Gower. So we know that Q uh, F actually equal to D I to the one over Q. So in order to make it Gower, Q has to be two. And we have just mentioned that P n is square v, so P minus one over two, which divides n, is also square v. And Q divides P minus one over two, is the only divisor of P minus one over two. So D actually equals to P minus one over two. That implies P equals to five. Moreover, when Q adjoint AI equal to Q, then that implies Q actually equal one. So P equals to three. So we are so what we have shown is that in order to achieve um, our um, initial problem, 
P, the prime number, has to be either 3 or 5. So that is what we have done for our project. Thank you very much.